Welcome to curl 8.1.1 May 23, 2023. So here is another curl release. <clears throat> I am Daniel, I'm the lead developer of curl since a while back. I work for Wolf SSL. These are uh, the details of how to get in touch with me. I'm going to try to do this the normal way. Some numbers, there's not going to be any security uh, vulnerabilities or mentions about that today, and there are no changes in this release, just bug fixes. Some um, words about pending coming removals and a little bit about what's next in, in the curl project, what's possibly in the coming in the next release. So this is release 218. We just keep on trying over and over again to get get it done properly in the end. Now, uh, this time, of course, we only had six days since the previous release, but still we had uh, contributions from 19 different uh, people, 10 of them new, so 2,885 in totals. 13 of them authored a commit that we merged um, into Git, then six new. 1148 authors in total. So in six days, quite an impress uh, impressive amount of people, I think. And yeah, so six days and 9,195 days since we started this journey. <clears throat> and of course, it is only six days uh, since the previous release because um, of some bugs that we shipped, some regressions we shipped in the previous release. So no new uh, things in this release, just 25 bug fixes. And I wanted to highlight if some of them. I think I extracted nine of them to tell you a little bit more about. I mean, you go to the changelog uh, on the website to read up about all of them if you're uh, really curious and interested in all the details about them. <clears throat> but uh, first, let's start out with we fixed a little uh, pre-pend use in the CMake build file. This is just a feature that is present in a new version of CMake. So we accidentally merged a f uh, use of a rather modern CMake feature, which makes made then builds with older CMakes um, not work. Pretty much a mistake. We reverted that and, and we work around using the prepend. So you can now go back and use the older version of CMake again, if you want to build curl that way. We also repaired a cross compiling regression. It was another little thing, a little um, enhancement of the CMake build that we did that accidentally was not done properly for when you cross compile using CMake. Now that should be better again. We, and, and uh, look at this. So I, I introduced a weird or funny workaround in the configure script to make it possible to better detect third party libraries or to verify that it actually works when you run configure to uh, work with uh, libraries specified in, in other directories, right, in custom directories. Uh, so, but it also turns out that in some cases, those same libraries are used by the compiler itself. So it turned out to be a little bit of a, a complicated situation. For example, if you want to check for the libz library, right, the, uh, doing Z, uh, gzip compression. Uh, so then, and, and, and for example, Clang, the compiler also uses that library. So the configure would check for the library using the compiler, but the compiler itself uses that library. So it was a little bit of a complicated situation. I solved it like this. It generates a script that sort of works around the limitations in the configure macro. But I would also want to highlight that this is also a bug in here. We got it reported just an hour after the release. So if you experience a problem with configure, especially if you had your CC variable set to something fun, you might also experience a bug in this little thing that I tried to fix. So we need to fix it a little bit more before it works totally fine. We also did this weird rename. So we had this private internal struct called HTTP underscore rec, R-E-Q. You know, that's just a private internal struct. T totally fine. And it turns out that the, the free BSD operating system, they merged in, 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 in their great wisdom, they merged a bug, actually, I would say. So they merged a change into their public 
uh, headers, uh, tcp.enet slash tcp.h, I believe, was the uh, header. So they merged a struct themselves named like this. So if you build on FreeBSD 14, which is their, their development version, you would get a, a compile error if you build curl with that on for that FreeBSD version because there's a name collision here. That's actually their bug, I insist, and I think they're going to fix it. But in the meantime, we remained our struct as well because now you can um, build curl on that uh, same FreeBSD system before they have fixed their problem. It's fine. <clears throat> Shit happens. In the uh, HTTP2 land, we fixed the problem that we had uh, been a little bit too restrictive in setting their um, max line length when we create HTTP2 things internally there. Uh, it's a little bit complicated to explain it fully, but we, we set a too narrow maximum line so we would sort of prevent using too long lines, but that uh, limit was too limited, so we broke I think it's the the Git Cinnabar thing. It's uh, the Mercurial Git integration was the one of those that found this problem. Uh, we also increased the stream window size up again to 10 megabytes in HTTP2 because we found the cases where where the pre where the other much smaller initial window size caused performance uh, degradations or regressions. Actually, now it's back up again, and we also fixed and f we found or fixed a few upload improvements or how using uh, well a few edge cases with h2 so and, wh and why do we get all these things with h2 suddenly <clears throat> after h2 being around since 2015 or yes 2015 was the rfc day it's because we did that huge refactor of h2 and h3 code over the last six months or so, so it's only natural that we get a few of these uh, rough edges to polish. But we're going there, we're, if you, so if you still experience problems with anything in curl, of course, submit issues and we will get to them and we will polish them and we will come back better and stronger than before. <clears throat> I noticed that for some reason, when you would provide a URL uh, and curl would not parse it correctly, or rather it would reject it because it wouldn't think it's a correct URL, it would actually just provide a more generic template error saying it's illegal. But now it actually uses error messages that try to identify what part or the reason why it failed to parse the URL. So sort of just provide more clues into why it rejects the URL. And the most significant regression in the previous release, the, the primary reason why we're doing this release, I totally screwed up the numeric, how to parse a numerical, let me rephrase that. So I, in the previous release, I, I, was, I was polishing the URL hostname parser and the URL hostname parser has a piece in there that tries to extract IPv4 numerical addresses and normalize them because of reasons. And uh, when I did that, my mm, I was too strict. So it, in many cases, the, the previous parser would identify it as a bad IPv4 address and say, this is an illegal hostname, whap, go home. But that was wrong, and we cannot really identify bad. Well, we can identify bad IPv6 addresses, but we cannot identify that as a bad URL because um, a bad IPv4 address provided, you know, wrong. For example, if you would do 1.2.3.256, right? The 256 is too big for to be a part in the IPv4 address. That's totally fine to have in the URL. It just that means that it's not an IPv4 address. You can still have it in there. Uh, so it can actually be used, for example, to look up the name in a slash etc slash hosts file and stuff like that. So now curl will not refuse those names anymore. It will try to identify a proper IPv4 address and normalize that. But if it's not a proper IPv4 address, it'll just leave it there and, and it'll be fine as well. Um, yes, several people ran into that regression, of course, because it was just stupid. 
um, and hopefully uh, it should be fixed now and I uh, have of course added more test cases to make sure that we can catch this so the next time <laughs> I, I think of improving this code uh, the test cases will catch if I do the same mistake uh, okay so I mentioned it before there's nothing new about the pending removals we are looking forward to remove two TLS backends possibly just one because the GS kit one is sort of up for discussion NSS is most certainly going to be removed in August so a few months away from remo removal in September we're going to remove support for building with legacy Ming W nobody cares about that so I don't think that's a big deal for anyone and we're going to remove support for space separated no proxy patterns in July next year so it's far away you don't have to think about that now um, so next release which is the same wording I had in the, my previous presentation right so but we're still planning on having the next release called 8.2.0 and what are we going to see in that release we are ideally hopefully uh, going to see IPFS support I took a look at it the other day again and it seems to be in a pretty good shape with we, we if anyone uh, watching this is interested in IPFS go join there and, and make sure to bring this over the sort of the last few steps to to the goal we need a few more tests we need to just double check the documentation and then I think we can add it and it's not actually native IP, IPFS support it's actually just just using a HTTP gateway so it pretty much just rewrites the URL into an HTTP request and goes through a gateway and you need to provide that gateway on a command line or as an environment variable um, we have a PR for doing directory listings for file code on slash slash URLs uh, I think that is going forward we have this option to tell a Windows curl that is built to use OpenSSL to still use the native um, CA store on Windows the names for these options CA native and proxy CA native is of course for using that CA store the native CA store so possibly we could use these, op these options to do other native CA stores possibly mostly like on Mac or I don't know wherever they are using native CA stores that we don't access normally normally we use just you know a pr provided file or a directory set up with uh, CA certs we are close to getting parallel tests and uh, that's awesome P pretty much doing them in parallel means less waiting for the tests to complete especially for uh, developers running or, or developing curl this is going to be a massive improvement we're talking uh, I I don't want to say numbers yet but it's it is it looks like it's going to be a, a great improvement in, in curl developers lives this is done by Dan Fandrich where um, this is hopefully also going to open up and make it more uh, it's going to feel less bad to add more test cases so if we can do test you know run through all the tests many times faster than before then we can also add many more tests without it sort of feeling like a major burden to developers it will also help us as developers to run through the tests faster and more convenient locally on our own machines uh, we are going to merge the support for for setting the HA proxy client IP HA proxy being a little protocol that adds information to your proxy and previously we could only set the native real actual IP address of curl now you can actually say hey I have this IP address in case you have curl as a sort of a middleman because you got the IP address from somewhere else and you want to pass it along and there's this new PR again I, I should say this is the second time around we got the PR before this is a new PR for adding support for the Gemini protocol Gemini being a little bit of a it's a bit of a special protocol but it's it's I would say I've, I think I've described it before it's, it's, a, it's a little bit of a combination of gopher and early HTTP 
done with TLS. I think it's a, a reaction on the complexity of modern HTTP and they try to simplify it. I'm not sure how well they have succeeded, but we're, um, I, we got that PR, it's still, I mean, it's still not there, right? So we have a lot more to do because there are no tests that we lack documentation. So there, there's, this is just the beginning of getting the support done there. But if there's a wish and if there's a the desire, I'm sure that people will uh, join in, figure out what to do and help out to get this into curl. If not, it's going to take a while to see it happen, I'm sure. So that is what is uh, coming up next, perhaps, possibly. Of course, we don't know if any of these actually is going to happen. These are all pub uh, pull requests that are existing right now. So we can, I mean, if you want to see any of these ones happen, join in, or you can submit your own and we can work on other stuff too. So the next release is planned to still, this is, we stick to the same schedule as for the previous release. So hopefully we can do a 2.0 on July 19th, 2023, which is then now 50 days away. Um, so that's the plan. On that URL, you can read the release notes for the pen, always the up, automatically updated release notes for the pending release. You can always go there and see what we have collected for the, for the, the next release. If you run curl in your, products, services, tools, whatever, and you need some commercial support, I'm here to help you. This is what I do all day. Um, if you have found any bugs or uh, typos or anything, submit them on, on GitHub and we will get to them. We're actually usually pretty fast on fixing bugs, uh, except for the most hairy ones or complicated ones. They can take a while, of course, but that's, you know, the nature of them. If you find or suspect any security problems, report them on hackerone.com slash curl. There's always a steady stream of those. Most of them turn out to be not security problems, which is awesome, but keep on submitting. Here are the same set of sponsors as I mentioned last week. They're awesome. And this is what I wanted to mention this time. So a little bit of a shorter presentation this time just these 25 bug fixes, curl 8.1.1. So uh, welcome to another release and uh, have fun. <laughs>